Hello backpackers, this is Juan with Juan Backpacks. I'm here today to talk to you about my winter gear loadout. It's really not quite ultralight, it's 11 pounds. If you want to know specifics on the weights, go to my lighter pack link in the video or in the comments below and the description below. I'm not going to go through the weights. I just want to kind of get through the gear so you get a feel for what I do in the winter time. This gear set takes me down to 20 degrees. That's for me personally. You may need to adjust if you're a cold sleep or whatever it might be, different gear. But this gear for me gets me down into 20 degrees pretty darn comfortably. I'm going to start with the big three. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Well, the big three. First is my, <clears throat> my pack, the G420 by Gossamer Gear. Love this pack. I've got a video about it on my website, so I'm not going to go into detail here. It uh, carried everything I needed and it carried it comfortably during my winter hike. And so check it out on my other videos. So this is the pack that I use. I liked it a lot. Now let's talk about the uh, shelter system. I went with the Gossamer Gear 1, very light tent. Again, weights and so forth. I think this came in at just around 17 plus ounces, but the weight is in my lighter pack below. Um, great shelter. We had snow and it handled the snow pretty darn well. It slid down the tent and went right down the sides and, and uh, it worked really well. So this tent handled snow pretty well. It's definitely not a four season tent, but it did pretty good in about four to five inches of snowfall that we had. So the Gossamer Gear Shelter, and I used a Polycro um, ground sheet for it too. Polycro ground sheet and the Gossamer Gear Shelter. Now, the sleep system. Sleep system was pretty simple. Basically, I used this thin light pad by Gossamer Gear just on the tent floor to kind of get some separation there between my actual um, my actual um, Neo Air X Light, um, you know, sleep pad in, in the ground. And really, it's not adding a ton of R value, maybe like a half. 0.5 R value. So that was a thin light. I like it because it keeps my pad from sliding around. It also has other uses in the wintertime. If I need to keep gear off the ground and from getting wet and so forth, I can just pull this thing out. The next part of my sleep system is actually the sleep pad. I use the Neo Air X Lite women's version. I'm a, I'm a short dude, so I can use the women's version pretty easily. Uh, the thing that I like about this is it has an R value of 5.6. So basically with this and the thin light, I'm probably around 6 R value. Not bad for winter backpacking. The pillow I use is the Neo Air, or I'm sorry, the Eros Pillow Premium Large. Comes in a little heavy, but I like it. It's comfortable, a little fuzzy, so it's warm. So I like this for winter backpacking. And then to add warmth to my um, down quilt, which I'll talk about in a second, I use the Sea to Summit uh, Reactor Compact Plus. Supposed to add about 20 degrees of, um, you know, um, on top of your, your sleeping bag. I probably got closer to 10 degrees, um, but still that's something I wanted. I wanted to push that bag that I have a little bit further. And so uh, 10 degree is not bad and it was comfortable, nice and warm against my skin in the wintertime. Like love the reactor and I'll have a review about that eventually. And then the um, down quilt that I use, it's a 20 degree economy burrow by Hammock Gear. Love this economy burrow. Took it on every backpacking trip for the last two to three years, about three years with me, Smokies, John Muir Trail, um, my trips around Pennsylvania, love it. It's a 20 degree bag, um, pretty economical in terms of price, and it did a nice job in the cold weather. I would say my, my um, sleep system did really well. I was maybe a little bit cold a couple times during the night, moved around a little bit, adjusted things, back to warmth, back to sleeping. So I wasn't really waking up because it was cold. So that was my big three. Let's move on to the next grouping of gear. Bam! Okay, let's talk clothing now, packed clothing. First thing you're gonna see is this down jacket by Kuyu. It's a super down, ultra light, just over five ounces. Terribly warm, as a matter of fact, right now. I'm like burning up wearing it in the house. But this is my puffy that I wear when I get into camp and so forth. So that's part of my packed gear 
when I'm winter backpacking. I'll talk about what I wear when I'm actually on the move. Rain layer, simple, frog tog, light, around five ounces, rain jacket, simple, cheap, and uh, effective in terms of keeping the water out when I need it. I also use a Polar Tech base layer. Um, I use this one for sleeping though. I wear a different base layer when I'm hiking. And uh, so in the winter time, I'll take this Polar Tech. Um, it's made by Kokatat. It's a kayaking company. I wear this actually under my dry suit. It's highly effective, high, really warm for the weight. Uh, again, that stuff's in my lighter pack, but that's my sleep clothes. Or if I really, truly get cold, I can rely on this to, to get me warm pretty quick. In a bag, I actually carry my fleece neck gaiter and a pair of convertible fingerless to mitten gloves. These are actually made by Orvis and they're um, fleece. I like the convertible gloves because when I need my fingers out, I can have them out. When I need them covered and, and they're cold, I can cover them up. And so I always keep, a, keep things like this in a Ziploc bag and at the top of my pack so that A, it doesn't get wet accidentally, but B, I'll have it there just to grab it, put it on and so forth. Don't have my hat in here because I would wear my hat um, while I'm hiking. And we'll get to that eventually when I talk about the worn clothing, but that's some of the things I put in here. Uh, underwear, change of underwear, some sports underwear. These happen to be Hanes, uh, odor resistant, blah, 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 pretty basic stuff. And then I've got a pair of mid-weight darn tough socks. Um, I wear them to hike in, also wearing them to, you know, um, a change out pair right here. And I like the shorter ones. And so I use the shorter ones even in the winter time. Um, and then last but not least, uh, my sleep socks are here someplace. Oh man, I gotta go get them. They're right here. Wait, 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 wait. Almost. Got them, got them, got them. Here we go. Sleep socks. Um, these are really thick. They're 3.8 ounces, but I like them um, because they're super thick. And if I really get into jam with my feet being cold when I'm hiking, when I'm backpacking, I can always just throw these on or something like that if I actually need to. But I typically just keep them there for sleep socks. So this is my sleeping gear right here, the Polar Tech and these really thick, heavy socks. And uh, that's what I need when I'm in camp. So that's my pack gear. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, good system though. Let's move on to the next one, which is my worn clothing. Let's see what that's all about. All right, folks, now we're gonna jump into the worn clothing, right? Now remember, it's a very simple system that I can incorporate some of my pack clothing with if things get warmer or if things get even colder than I'm expecting. Again, this gear was for around 20 degrees and it was between 35 degrees and 20 degrees basically the whole time that we were out there. So this is what I wear when I'm actually hiking slash backpacking. Hat, fleece hat, really simple, straightforward, not too fancy there. I'm gonna wear for boots, the Excursion Fusion waterproof shoes by Zero Shoes. Love them, very comfortable, very good in the wintertime, good traction for me uh, in testing these boots out, they're doing great. Socks, darn tough socks. I like the shorter length for whatever reason. Even though I'm wearing boots, I just wear the shorter length. Works for me, so why not? On my, against my body, I'm actually wearing some merino wool. This merino wool is by Kokatat. Um, it can be any brand, but I find it's good because I use it for kayaking too under my dry suit. So I already have it, so I use it. And then um, obviously my underwear, sports underwear, you know, odor control, right? Uh, the pants are pretty interesting. They're a pair of Wrangler um, pants. They're kind of stretchy and uh, they're like outdoor pants that I picked up for $22. Really comfortable, love them. They're a little bit water resistant, just a little bit water repellent, I guess. Um, and so I really like these pants for hiking in the winter time. Uh, so that combined with my uh, Merino wool underlayers are awesome. While I'm actually backpacking and on the move, I wear this on the outside. This is the Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie. It is absolutely incredible. This is probably one of the best pieces of gear that I've purchased in the last year, hands down. So versatile. I did a first look, a video about it. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but this is a great active, like a winter active outer layer 
because it really does get rid of that heat when you, in the places where you need it, like under the arms. You can zip here to cool or, or get warmer, whatever you need while you're on the move. And it's you know got a little bit of uh, water resistance to the shell on the outside, and it cuts wind pretty good too. So it's a great outer layer for hiking in the wintertime when you're actually moving. That you know the down that I have is for when I get into camp, and I can even put the down over top of this if it's really, really uh, cold outside. So I've got that whole clothing system built out for winter, and it's really flexible no matter which way the temperature goes. So these are the worn clothes, worn clothes that I have when I'm out there backpacking in the winter. Next up is going to be what my cook kit for in the winter. Cook kit. Oh, I just did this with this. And I remember why I put it in my hand. One of the things I like about the Ventus hoodie actually is, you know, with my um, water filter, which is enclosed completely so the water doesn't leak, there's a little pocket right here. So if I wear this Ventus hoodie while I'm sleeping um, inside the tent, which I did um, over top of my sleep clothes because it was getting down to about 20 degrees. Um, so I wore this and, uh, and it worked out good because I could put that... Um, put my water filter inside here and not even have to worry if it was getting uh, too cold, it would stay warm all night and not freeze and ruin the filtering system. I also put my phone in here too. Pretty good deal. So let's now move on to my cook kit. All right, I tell you what, we're gonna combine three things. Yeah, three th things in this section of the video. It's getting intense, it's getting real intense. We're gonna do the cook kit, right? But we're also going to do the food storage and the water filtration too all at the same time because they're all interrelated. Let's take a look at the food storage first and we'll work our way across the table here. Food storage wise, I use the Hilltop Packs, uh, really super light food bag. This is the large made of the new material called DTRS 75. That sounds really futuristic. So if you're using something else, it's named something else and it's not as cool with a number, Get this instead by Hilltop's Pack. This is awesome. Got a food thing in here. Got a spoon holder in here, which was extra. And I bought the bear hanging kit. And so it comes with a uh, little carabiner. It comes with a rock bag. And it comes with the line already. So I bought that as an entire kit. And it's an awesome, awesome thing. Yes, awesome thing. So you again, you can check out. I've got a video about it on my uh, on my what or on my YouTube channel here. And uh, so you will, if you want to know more detail about it, certainly jump over there to that video. Um, the next thing is the cook kit. So this is where the rubber hits the road, right? The cook kit. I try to keep things really simple and efficient, especially in winter time. Kind of the heart of my cook kit is this bag right here. This is a Hyperlite repack, it's called. It's an insulated bag, and what it does is it allows me to rehydrate food inside here and even repackage that food. And so I've got some ramen, I think, in here. I do. There we go. There's a bag of ramen that I packaged, and I would cook in this and put all the ingredients in there. You put it in here, you dump your hot water in here once it's boiling, and then you can close it up. The cool thing about it is this flap comes back over, makes a bit of a handle. So when your hand's in here, it keeps it warm too in the wintertime. But this is just a way to keep your, your hot food hot in the wintertime. And also for me, it's a way to not have to really clean out my cook pot. Hate cleaning out my cook pot. So I'm always gonna avoid that any chance that I get. And so this helps me do that. Got a spoon, basically your titanium, titanium spoon. Can't say that right. And then here's where the rubber hits the road, the actual cook system. I keep a band on it just to keep the lid on. Uh, it's a Tox titanium 750 milliliter pot. Um, there's a reason I'm using a bigger 750 milliliter pot, and in a minute you'll see that. Um, I'm using an MSR2 pocket rocket. I've used the MSR original for years and years and years. Um, it's a proven winner for me, so I'm sticking with a proven winner. Love it. Small mini Bic in here, and then a lighter load towel that I wrap around that I can use to clean things off, dry things off, that I wrap around the actual 110 gram canister. And so that's basically my cook system. The reason I like this simple cook system and the kind of bigger 750 milliliter pot is that when I boil water in here, I can dump off some of the water in to rehydrate my food, but I still have some water left, it's hot. And so in the winter time, I can make a hot drink while I'm waiting for my food to rehydrate. And I do this all the time, even in the summer. 
I'll dump some coffee in the water that's left or I'll put some hot chocolate mix in there. And it's, you know, you still have to rinse it out and clean it, but it's not definitely not as intense as like scraping the food out of your pot and things like that. So I just, I'm just not into that because it takes extra time. Don't like it. So I will make a hot drink in the remaining water, rinse it out, and then I'm good to go for the next round of cooking. I can put it away. So that is my cook system. Very simple, straightforward. Again, the weights of this stuff is all in my later pack link in the description below. Now, water filtration slash water storage. Um, I really like the Quick Draw by Platypus in the wintertime because it's self-contained and I can put this in the pocket of my uh, one of my hoodies while I'm in my tent sleeping and I don't have to worry about my filter freezing up and then becoming um, ineffective and making me sick. So that's one reason I got this because it is self-contained. I don't have to worry about water leaking out. It's got caps at both ends that are watertight. No problems there. Love it. Comes with a one liter bag. Um, this can be used as water storage. This is my dirty water bag that I use to filter water from here through the filter into my two water, other clean water storage bottles. One, li one liter smart water bottle, and then probably about 75% of a liter here uh, is a sports cap bottle to actually drink and make drink mixes in and all kinds of things. Um, and so I'll make uh, like a breakfast drink in here in the morning and then, you know, obviously drinking out of it. Don't really worry about it. By, by lunch, I'm ready to put some electrolyte in here or whatever. Uh, but this is my storage again. Got an extra liter of storage if I need it. Uh, obviously, I'd carry more if I was in an area that didn't have a lot of water. But here in Pennsylvania, we got lots of water everywhere um, in all the places like out in Sierra that I've hiked. And uh, so it's been pretty easy just to use this system. So this is my winter food system, food storage, uh, cook system slash water storage filtration system. And so we will move on to the next items, which are electronics, navigation, and how about miscellaneous stuff? No, electronics and navigation. Yeah, let's go to electronics and navigation next. Okay. All right, it is time for electronics and navigation. Navigation, important topic in the winter time. This is a time when you definitely don't want to get lost. So it's a good idea to double up or maybe even triple up on your navigation because things can happen, especially when you're using electronic means to navigate. So in the winter time, one of the things I like is my InReach Mini. I've got the SOS button on there, but I can also use it for navigation and linking it with my phone and the maps there. So it's another way to navigate the trail. I also like on my phone, which I don't have my phone here because I'm filming with it. I like on my phone, um, like all trails or gut hooks or something like that, <clears throat> where you have another kind of electronic map. We can kind of track where you're at on the uh, trail. Uh, constantly. I think that's a good idea and most folks are taking phones with them. Um, and then last but not least, a good old school paper map. Yeah, good old school paper map. I think that in the winter time because things, to, electronics can get wet, you can fall in a creek, they can stop functioning because of the cold. I really feel like you've got to have a map and a compass with you uh, when you go out in the winter time, especially for longer multiple day like through hiking type things uh, I think it's really important to do that so that's navigation slash some electronics the rest of my net electronics kit goes like this I'm going to take a battery pack with me just in case something gets um, so cold that it drops the charge uh, and then I'm going to always try to keep this in my pack and then obviously keep it in my sleeping bag to keep it warm um, and so I take a battery bank. This one is a 1300, um, 1300, what, AH, whatever it is, um, uh, battery bank from Anchor. So I like that. <clears throat> um, I also take a uh, lamp, headlamp, and this one is the uh, Nikkor NU25. Love it. Used it for a few years now, and I'll never change because it's simple and it works and it's light. Um, and then to recharge things, I use a simple USB connector and it actually has three different um, ends here. One can connect to my uh, phone, my iPhone. One will recharge my inReach and also um, uh, my headlamp. 
and then the other one will recharge something else that I have that I can't remember right now. <laughs> and, uh, and I do carry one more, um, <clears throat> one more cord with me, and I don't have it here, and that's the cord for my Garmin watch. And so it uses a special cord to connect and recharge. And so if I'm going to be out more than, let's say, a week, because this watch will last at least a week, um, then I might um, take that charging cable, but mostly it's going to be that. So these are just my electronics for the wintertime. Now, if I'm on a through hike situation, I'd probably take like a, a charging cube, like to, to plug it into the wall and so forth. But I'm assuming just a few nights in the wintertime. And so that's my kit for that. So again, if you want to see the weights of this stuff, see the detail, go to my lighter pack link below and all of it is there. So let's move on to, what is it? The next topic? Oh, miscellaneous kits. Let's talk about the poop kit too and the personal hygiene all at one time. So let's talk about different miscellaneous kits, the poop kit and hygiene. Yeah, let's do that up next. All right, this is going to be the miscellaneous kits. That means like first aid, poop kit, some other stuff that I need for winter backpacking. So let's dive right into the last segment here. Last list of the gear. So first aid kit, here's my first aid kit. It's in red, so I see it. It's got real basic stuff. I'm not gonna go over the detail in here. Everybody's a little bit different about what they carry in the first aid kit and their philosophy. This is all the stuff that's around my philosophy of first aid kits. Um, it's nothing special for winter in particular. Uh, it's like band-aids and uh, um, <clears throat> antibiotics and a little knife with some scissors and some other things in there. Uh, so it's nothing special, very lightweight. Poop kit, Ooh, this is super light, worth looking at here. So basically I've got a poop kit here and it's got a bidet a Kulu Clean bidet. I've got a small dropper with concentrated soap in it. Important part of your bidet poop kit. So you can see how ultralight I am there, right? And then obviously the Deuce of Spades shovel for digging that cat hole. And then I do carry like, sometimes I carry an extra water bottle like this crushed down to use for water, but most of the time I'm using one of my water storage bottles to run my bidet, um, but I have this here just in case I want to do it. Sometimes I feel like doing it this way. Sometimes I just do it the other way. So anyway, that is my poop kit. It's very simple, very straightforward, held together by a rubber band. Super, super light. Again, check out my later pat link. You'll see how light that is. So here's some miscellaneous winter gear, um, some more miscellaneous stuff. This is my kind of my personal hygiene kit right here. Um, for winter and I got a couple of little things in here. So I got some natural toothpaste, really tiny toothbrush, got to brush my teeth every day and even in the winter time. Um, some um, Bacardin and basically this is in the winter time, not, you know, not for mosquitoes, things like that, but we got a lot of ticks here in Pennsylvania. So I like to put this on my, around my, on my boots and on my pant legs so that I don't get, you know, ticks crawling up me and it, re well, at least reduces the chance of that. So I still take this in the winter time and this is a repackaged thing, a, a smaller spray bottle. I've got some, um, outdoor vitals pyro putty. And just like the name implies, man, it's for fire starting. So no sense of messing around in the winter time, especially if you're in an emergency situation, you're getting hypothermic, you know, a lot of folks are like, well, I can do this and I can get my kindling from this and I'll shave the bottom of the tree. Like I know all those tricks, but here's the problem. When you get really cold in the winter time and you need to start a fire, you are not real good with your hands. I mean that if you're like pre hypothermic or getting hypothermic, you're not really good with your hands. I mean, you're lucky you're going to be able to work your lighter at that point. So having something that really gets that fire going quick, I think is really important. This is a small little thing a small amount of weight and uh, definitely worth it. Got a small dropper of hand sanitizer. Again, hygiene on the trail, very important. And then my last piece of gear is just a really simple folding saw, Coleman folding saw. I've had it for years. I use a rubber band to keep the saw blade in from popping out, you know, accidentally. Got a, like a 
small or a thick rubber band there and uh, that rounds out kind of my miscellaneous gear for winter backpacking so that's it folks that is my winter backpacking kit of 11 pounds later pack link below in the uh, description if you have any comments for me if you have any ideas about changes that i could make um, about videos that you want me to make about specifics of this gear i'm probably going to do one on my clothing uh, because it is a very kind of lightweight simple straightforward system that can really keep you warm in a lot of different scenarios so that is my winter backpacking loadout until next time get out there and do some backpacking do some hiking and i will see you on the next video